Welcome to the Fin Hub Show, the one NFL podcast you can't leave off your roster. Now, here's your hosts, Joe and Kevin DeHavel. All right, all right, all right. Welcome in, everybody, and happy Tuesday. Welcome, welcome. Today is season one, episode seven of the Fin Hub Show. Wow, we've made it pretty far with this. Yeah, it's exciting, man. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> seven is. already, right? Seven already, man. It's cool. Guys, before we get into some Dolphins talk, I do want to talk about our giveaway. It's still happening. We're going to be announcing the winner on the 21st of July. So you still got about 20 days or so to get in on that action. So comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed to us. Make sure you're follow- following us on Twitter and Instagram. And you could be the lucky winner. So comments away. Also, guys, I want to mention another thing that we're pretty excited about doing. A chance for you to get featured on the show somehow. Basically, all you have to do is just tweet and hashtag FinHub, and it could be a comment, it can be a question, it could be whatever, a statement, something about the Dolphins, something Dolphins related, or at least related to the show, and your tweet could be featured on next episode, so just hashtag FinHub, and we'll keep an eye out for that. Another thing, too, I want to say we're really happy with our 9 a.m. showing. It's been a lot of fun chatting with you guys that make it there. Talking Timothy, Yuki, Scotty, Slushy Sloth, Joel, Brandon. Joel, you're actually going to be on the show with us soon. Can't wait for that. We also got Cat in the Hat, the Jesse. You guys are awesome. Keep showing up. And if for you other Dolphins fans that haven't made it out to a 9 a.m. show, check it out. You could, it gives you a chance to talk with some other Miami Dolphins fans and just chat about some to- Dolphins football uh, for an hour or so. So, um, so, yeah, make sure to check that out, guys. Yeah. It's definitely a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I like how you guys get involved in the conversation. Obviously, we, both of us are responding. Um, we'll do a better job of saying who's responding every time we do a response, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm thinking I might log into another account just to specify that I'm Joey and you're Kevin. Okay. Yeah, you maybe know? I could do the same. I don't know. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely a lot of fun. We, we love talking to you guys on there. You guys actually, you know... You correct us sometimes, which we appreciate. We're all we're all learning here, you know, as Dolphin fans. And you can only know so much, so it, it's it's a blast, man, for sure. Yeah, it really is. We appreciate you guys. Anyway, let's get into some Dolphins talk. So the Panthers recently won the Stanley Cup, and it's been a lot of fun watching them Yeah, parade, parade and, around yeah. Fort Lauderdale and everything. We saw it's Raheem days, Mostert. Man. Yeah, days. yeah. And Raheem Mostert got in on the action holding up the cup. It was... Yeah. It's pretty cool to see that. Dolphins have been posting about it. And now that breeds the question, which franchise in South Florida do you think is closest, aside from the Panthers, is closest to reaching that status where we could have that parade next? Well, there's only four that come to mind, right? So it's only it's the Marlins, the Heat, the Dolphins, and the Panthers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Panthers just won it, so obviously that's... That's a team that you'd like to think, you know, they've gone to the Stanley Cup twice in a row already. Uh, they, they found success in the playoffs, so maybe maybe they can repeat. They can do something there. Then you go to the Marlins. That's a wash. I'm not even like – there's no way in hell that I think the Marlins are winning it again. <laughs> I mean, anytime soon. And then the Heat, you know, I always have faith in them. They always find a way. But as of right now, they're, it looks like we're – gonna run it back unless unless they find a way to get donovan mitchell which i think that's a possibility that would be fun yeah i mean he hasn't signed his extension yet right so yeah i i would have a lot of faith in them then but as of right now you know i do love the young core i love the team that we have but it's not enough to get you over the hump nah and it looks like the sixers just reloaded adding in paul george we yeah. were talking about him yesterday Dude, that's but... a hell of a big three now you got yeah. joel b tyrese maxey um, Paul George, yeah. uh, I love that team right now, even though I can't stand Philly either. Um, but then that leads me to the Dolphins. Uh, yeah, I would I would like to say the Dolphins have the best chance to uh, put out a, a winning team. You know, maybe maybe have them be the champions of South Florida. You know, coming soon. So 
I, I love what they're doing with the team. I, I think they've made key improvements on the coaching staff, on personnel wise. I think just everything we've been able to do under Mike McDaniel has been just trending towards a really good franchise. Building a championship. Building a championship. Team. Yeah. And, and that bringing in that pedigree as well. We're b- bringing in guys that have won it. So I think it's, it's fantastic. I love it. Uh, the culture is fantastic. I mean, wh- wh- what do you think? It's you- gotten better. Yeah, I, I agree. I yeah. think most likely would be the Panthers because they just won it. But aside from them. And it's been beautiful, man. Like, the Panthers are actually. Yeah, it was cool. Like, I can't say, like, I'm a huge hockey guy. Like, I'm really not. I, you know, I'm, I'm part of a bandwagon now because, you know, I support the Panthers. Wasn't a big guy, but as soon as we got Kachuk, I, I looked into them and I'm like, oh, wow, this guy's actually pretty nice. And I love our team as well. I think they, they were full of some badass players. They just re-signed Reinhardt, Rhino, mm-hmm. uh, to an eight-year deal. It's crazy. I didn't even... <laughs> I mean, you never really hear about that. I guess hockey, they structure their contracts a little different. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm excited. I think for sure, m- to, for me to answer it, the Dolphins are the closest in South yeah. Florida. So All right, so back to what I was saying. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, I think most likely we would be the Panthers. Like I said, I'm not a huge Panthers guy. I don't know much about hockey. Yeah. But it was cool to see another South Florida team win something. So I'm always going to support that team. Then you got the Marlins, who are absolutely terrible. Yeah. It just seems like ownership doesn't doesn't really care. They're, they're not just, they're not serious about winning. They though. just build up some players and ship them out as soon as like they have any kind of value. So it's it's kind of hard to get behind a franchise like that. It's a shame. Yeah, and it's it's crazy because in in baseball you don't have a, a salary cap. Yeah, so it's, you can just bring in whoever you want. The Marlins just don't do it. They don't spend money. Yeah, and any guy that's actually any good, we ship them out for whatever reason. I know we have one of the better farm systems in in the MLB, but mm-hmm. you know that I don't I don't see them. They're not serious about winning. They're always going to do it with you know bargain shopping if they ever do. So it's it's not likely. Yeah. So. But yeah, so I wouldn't count on the Marlins winning anytime soon. Mm-hmm. And then you have the Heat. And I love the Heat. I think the Heat are incredible. We're a great franchise. We're much like the like the Spurs kind of mold. Mm-hmm. So I would even I would even have us in somewhat of the comparison to being somewhat of that Steelers kind of team. Yeah, they're just always in, we're the, just in the always, mix, right? We're just always a good team. Yeah. Like we can always compete. And what's the common thing? It's coaching, right? Yeah. Eric Spolsch is one of the best coaches Coaching in the and it's NBA. just a franchise. Yeah. The franchise in total, just yeah. top to bottom. Mm-hmm. So I do love the Heat. I think that they're going to find a way to retool. But the team that I would like to win the most would be the Miami Dolphins. And I do think out of, not counting the Panthers in this one, out of the Marlins, the Heat, and the Dolphins, I do think that the Dolphins are closest or would have the best chance to win a championship out of those three teams. Over the Panthers as well? No, no, no. Out of the, you said out of excluding the, the Panthers. Excluding the Panthers. Okay. The Panthers are most likely because they just want sure. it. They just run it back. And, and it's, it's and it's happened before. I think yeah. the last team the last team to do it was in 2020. And then before that was like in 2016. So back to backs happen in in hockey. It's not impossible. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Dolphins here. I'm gonna say the Dolphins here, yeah. Yeah. No, and it's Definitely, you know, looking back at the Heat, talking about them a little bit more, I think the the reason why they've been able to always be successful is because they don't they don't believe in tanking, they don't believe in stripping down their team. They always want to stay competitive, and I think now with the type of coach that we have, the culture we have built in the Dolphins, I think we're gonna be we're gonna be able to sustain a, a nice level of success. And I think it it starts with drafting. I think we've done a, a hell of a job lately, and I think now we actually have the coach and the franchise. Uh, you know, obviously the city, also people want to come to Miami, but we just have all the key elements to, you know, entice players to come in. So I think it's it's awesome. I, I love it right yeah, now. Yeah, they're building a championship caliber team yeah. top to bottom. They're yeah. doing it the right way, finally, mm-hmm. instead of getting that one big that guy. big whale, right? Like you we know, like to the say it. Donegan Sue, yeah. the Mike Williams, you know, like, yeah, and it was just, always few and far between, right? We get like the the whale of free agency in in the NFL, right? And then no one else is coming here. 
Yeah. But the only way, reason why they would come is, like I've said before, you wave that money in their face and they're like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go play in Miami. It's awesome. Yeah. So. Well, with that being said, though, one of the most important things, obviously, when it comes to a football team is the defense. Mm -hmm. Do you expect the Dolphins to have a better defense this season than we did last season? You know, surprisingly, with all the dysfunction last year on defense that we felt like we had, we were one of the better defenses in the NFL, you know, and I think it's it's a it's a tough question because yes, I, I this is me being optimistic right now with Anthony Weaver coming in, the additions we've made, but I'm gonna say yes. And and the reason why I'm saying yes is is because of player development under Anthony Weaver. And I, I know on basically the exit not the exit, but, you know, when they were interviewing Anthony Weaver and, you know, Mike McDaniel was going over the whole thing with uh, Fangio a little bit. He touched on it a little bit. He was basically saying how Weaver al aligns with him. And it kind of sounded like a shot towards, um, you know, Vic Fangio. Yeah. But he aligns with him in player development. And, and they share the same, I guess, focus and, uh, you know, views on that. And Anthony Weaver, I mean, you see him last year and under his defense, he he had guys coming out and having career years. Like Jadavion Clowney was 30 years old. He was able to, to tie his, his career high in sacks his first year with Anthony Weaver on that Baltimore defense. And and obviously, uh, the other defensive tackle, uh, Matt Matabike, something Matabike? like, I think, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you say his name? He had 13 sacks under him. So... What excites me the most is like we, we have brought in some of these defensive tackles that haven't been able to do much in their career. But I think if there's someone on the defensive line, if someone in this coaching staff like Anthony Weaver, he can he can bring that out of one of these get guys. The most out of yeah, man. guys who haven't been able to make too much noise. In like a Neville Gallimore mm -hmm. or maybe Tierra Tart has something in there, you know. Uh, I don't know. Were you going to say something? Well, and that's the hope after losing a guy like Christian Wilkins and the Dolphins deciding not to pay him $27 million annually, which was a pretty, it's a pretty big hit to consider uh, to, to have Christian Wilkins off the team. Now he was a guy that brought in a lot of energy, a lot of leadership. He was a, he was a fun guy to watch uh, on and off the field. Cause he was, he was a bit of a goofball, but he seems like overall just a really cool dude but he was also a dog in the trenches like he he did his job very well and it also allowed for zach sealer to have some great numbers too and, and put up production how much of how much of christian Wil losing out on christian wilkins will affect zach sealer is that something that maybe weaver's focusing in on maybe he's bringing up one of these defensive tackles is there anyone that sticks out in that room right now Aside from Calais Campbell, obviously. Well, I mean, not not to get into it, but I do think Calais Campbell would be, and I'm, we, we're not going to talk about him, but I think he would be the key factor in continuing for Zach Sealer to have that level of success. Because I think if there's anyone that can, I guess, replicate what Christian Wilkins did in this room, it would have to be Calais Campbell, right? Right. And maybe look at the film, maybe see exactly how Wilkins affected other offensive um you know offensive linemen to allow sealer to come in because you did see a lot of like key moments last year that that wilkins would do this thing that he crossed to get to to sealer's guy sealer will come around and yeah. you know get free so I'm, I'm sure they're gonna cook stuff up like that but i mean like we said player development i think i think weaver's known for that anthony weaver so i i would like to think that he's gonna bring up one of these guys maybe these guys like benito jones too i don't know like there's so many guys. Someone's that, gonna be a surprise in that line. Yeah, is and, what I'm what I'm taking from. And this. I think the guy that's sticking out to me the most is Neville Gallimore. I think he's a guy that was talented coming out of college, and I think he was a relatively high draft pick, like a third round pick or something like that. So, the Cowboys saw something in him, right? So maybe we do too. They guaranteed his contract fully, so he's gonna stick around. I don't I don't see them getting rid of him either in the off season. Or, well, this you know leading into the season. So he's going to make the team. I would like to think that he's probably that guy that, you know, maybe Anthony Weaver has circled and he's like, all right, we're going to see what we got with this guy. So that'd well, be nice. 
hopefully that all works out for Zach Sealer because he was putting up some great numbers alongside Christian yeah. Wilkins. Yeah, we were calling him Sack Sealer, yeah. right? Sack Sealer, yeah. Sack Sealer. No, he, he looked fantastic last year too. What's man. that thing that Tobin does? Uh, seal it on up. I don't. I yeah, don't, he does something know. for for Zach Sealer. Oh, it's, really? Yeah, it's funny. Um, yeah, Tobin's awesome. Tobin's awesome. I yeah. love that guy. But um, but yeah, hopefully Zach Sealer finds his his running mate in either Calais Campbell or Neville Gallimore. You know, it's hopefully it's one of these guys. And here's what Zach Sealer had to say about Coach Anthony Weaver and even playing with guys like Jordan Poirier and how that affects the defense. It's been great. Um, it's been awesome learning uh, Coach Weaver, his system, how he sees defense, um, playing with these guys behind us and kind of building as a unit this offseason. Um, it's been great um, all around, honestly. Uh, DBs talking, hearing them loud behind us, the linebackers really communicating up front, and then uh, us up front of the D-line kind of working together and uh, learning how to play off each other. Have you been talking with any of the new guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's been great. Um, Brooks has been great talking to him. He's obviously directly behind me, so he's always talking. Uh, Poyer, it's really cool to hear him back there um, relaying calls, and which can affect us or not affect us each play, which is really good to get that communication down, down from back down. So, Defense, how helpful is it for you that you've been in the Baltimore system, and mm -hmm. is it much crossover compared to what you've done in the past? So that was... Yeah five years ago and a couple coordinators ago so it's been some things have kind of triggered in my head like oh yeah I remember that call I remember how that was played or what we looked for when we did those reps um, so it's been really cool to kind of circle back to that as a veteran and uh, kind of taking it with a different perspective I'm like oh yeah that's why we're doing that you know sometimes as a rookie and a young guy you really don't know what's going on or why you're doing something you just kind of make sure you do it to the best of your ability especially me I was in a obviously not in the best spot in Baltimore um, just from a growth perspective. So I wasn't growing at the rate I should have been. So um, it's cool having grown down here, learning football more, playing better, uh, to come back and circle around and playing this defense is a lot of fun. With, there's going to be supposedly a lot of rotation. How does that impact you from a chemistry standpoint? Because I know you and Christian, mm -hmm. you guys didn't even need to talk to know what you guys yeah. were doing. Yeah, no, it was um, we we didn't, and uh, that was statistics. There's nothing that beats that. Rick one was the same boat. Um, we could get out there I've been with those guys for three, four years. Um, it's gonna be. It just take time. Make sure we talking on and off the field, hanging out on the side, and getting to know how those guys see ball and what they how they want to play and how we can play off each other. And building that rotation will help too with keeping each other fresh and ready for fourth quarters and stuff like that, long drives. So obviously the leadership from guys like. Jordan Poyer, that's going to make a difference in this defense as well. Also, another thing that hasn't really been talked about enough, I feel, is last season, Jalen Ramsey missed half the season yeah, due to injury key, man. in the beginning portion. And so we basically were running with a hobbled Xavier Howard mm -hmm. most of the year. And then towards the end of the season, Xavier Howard was just a mess. And that's when we had Ramsey back. So we never really played with two starting corners at the same time or two fully healthy starting corners at the same time. I would love to see what this defense looks like with a healthy Jalen Ramsey and a healthy Kendall Fuller going into the year. It's going to make all the difference in the world. Considering you also have Kohu, who I believe led the team in defensive snaps last season. Yeah, it was like 940-something, yeah. something like that. Yeah, almost 1,000 snaps on yeah. defense. So... Even though he didn't have his best season last year, I think that was because of the injuries surrounding him. There was a lot of pressure put on him. He's yeah. going to be our nickel guy. But now, what happens with a guy like Cam Smith, who we had brought in in last year's draft as a second round? A lot of people had him going in the first round. So we thought at the time, it was like, man, we got to steal with yeah, this guy. With this guy. Sure. But he didn't even get to play. He, I think he was the ninth corner on the roster so he was like way down there we were playing a guy like eli apple over him who was getting absolutely demolished bethel. all season bethel which i loved bethel i thought he was a cool yeah even the even the guy that we got back in the noah igmanogany trade yeah um which i forget his name he was like another noah igmanogany yeah he was clone. no i mean he barely knew the defense i mean you would like to think that cam smith knew it better vic fangio just had it out for him and yeah Apparently, Cam Smith took the high road. He did. Yeah. yeah. With that, with, with the Vic Fangio situation, didn't really care to comment on it. 
Said, he said he took it as a learning experience, and that's the right attitude, it's right? It's really cool, yeah. Yeah, which you, you you hear all these other comments like Fangio not liking him essentially because of his character, I think the type of person he was, but, you know, he took the high road. It sounds like like he's just making the most out of his situation. Another guy, like uh, another thing about Anthony Weaver, these, these players want to play for him. And it's the same thing as Mike McDaniel, right? So you, you'd like to think he's going to get the most out of Cam Smith, put him in the right position. I know Cam Smith is excited as well. So, yeah, man, I, I'm, I remember last year, it just was like hurting my brain trying to understand why Eli Apple was out there and all these other guys like Bethel, Justin Bethel, which is an older player too that, you know, obviously it's a veteran. He's but a, I, the special teams guy, though, is what he was. But, but exactly, Weaver de- um, believes in development, and I, you, and in order to develop a player, he needs to be out there playing. He needs if to get. If someone's gonna reps. get cooked on defense, let yeah. it be the rookie. Let the and rookie get some constant, learning experience. Like Eli Apple just constantly getting destroyed. I was yeah. just like, like, what are we doing here? Like, yeah, it doesn't it was, even make sense. It was not fun to watch. But I mean, do you think that you know possibly it, he can have like a breakout season? Maybe, and the breakout is very easy to say because it's like. I'll, I'll lean, okay, to consider, better than last year, okay, right? to consider this a breakout season just for play. Cam, he would just need some playing time. Yeah, which if you look at the cornerback room right now, he should be the at least talent wise, the he's, fourth. He's probably yeah, the the third or fourth. But talent I would, I would, wise, he's third. Yeah, talent wise, he's third. But he's gonna be le- fourth and, and realistically. And, hold on, he could be the second. He could be second best there. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. But I understand that. But at least on this roster, he shouldn't have a hard time climbing up, climbing up to that four spot. No. Nah. So hopefully he can he can make some waves this offseason in training camp and maybe in the preseason to get him to help him climb the ladder. Because obviously, you know, you have your your three starters in. And who's his who's his competition though at that fourth spot? It's like Nick Needham. Nick Needham. I mean, he. I would like to think that he's at least getting a chance to compete against Cater Kohu too to mm-hmm. find some playing time, right? Yeah. Which I, I know he's not a slot corner, so, or maybe he can't play slot. But who's he competing against? It's he's gonna be competing against Nick Needham, Storm Duck, and I believe it's another undrafted free agent. Yeah, the, that we the picked white up. corner. Yeah. What's his name? Uh. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He Bonner. Yeah, right? he, Ethan Bonner, who's like super fast. Yeah, and he One played well. He actually played a little last year, and he played well when he was out there. Yeah. So I, I think they're high on him as well. So, but out of all those guys, yes, we talk about it. He is by far the most talented one, and and you, it screams on his tape in college, right? There's a reason why people were considering him in the first round, and why he was considered a steal. So, I'm. Well, I think hopefully he gets the playing time. He Unfortunately, will. Will. <laughs> the playing time. I, I'm I'm hoping that it doesn't happen because of some kind of inner injury. I just I hope that he's so impressive in training camp and in preseason that it's like we have to put this guy out there. Let's see what he could do on a real stage and maybe give him some time there. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you remember last year in preseason, he looked he looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think he was actually the second. He had the second most tackles. I in think preseason he didn't last he have a year. game with like eight tackles. Uh, Something like that. Either eight tackles or eight total tackles oh, okay. throughout preseason. But, you know, you don't want your cornerback getting so many tackles, right? Hey, whatever, man. At least he can tackle, defended. unlike yeah. Eli Apple. Oh, that, was, that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't ever want to see that guy again. So. But, yeah, overall, I would, I would venture to say that the defense should be better mm-hmm. this season just because of the fact that hopefully, knock on wood, Jalen Ramsey will be there to start the season. Just yeah. starting the season. Just with that alone, because because now huge. you think about the veteran leadership too. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's it's on all levels. Okay, so you have starting with the back. You got Jordan Poyer, who you heard Zach Sealer say how important that was to call things out, or or whatever. So you got Jordan Poyer over there with yeah, the safety. It's safeties. like another quarterback back there. You know? Exactly. He's gonna he's gonna quarterback that safety. Room. Mm-hmm. Then you have. A guy like Jalen Ramsey starting out the season with the Dolphins fresh, ready to go. And it's it's true what you're saying, though. Everything starts pre-snap. It's like what the defense is seeing so that they can be in the right position. And if Jordan Poirier can get these guys in the right position, that's huge. But, but so, yeah, you got so you got in the safety room, you got Jordan Poirier. 
In the corners, you got Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Then on the line, you got Calais, Calais Campbell. Campbell. Even the linebacking room, which maybe there's Jordan no Brooks. true veteran there, or that 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 veteran that we have in Calais Campbell or even the Jalen Ramsey. Mm -hmm. But between David Long Jr., Jordan Brooks, and who's the other linebacker that we got? The uh, Walker. Walker. Anthony Walker. If they could stay healthy, that's a really that's a huge upgrade from what we had last season. And I know that I'm not sure if it was Timothy or Scotty who was mentioning uh, on one of the last lives, uh, on one of the last premieres, that this linebacker room is going to help us against the Bills being being able to defend Josh Allen. That's going to yeah, be man. tremendous for us. Well, that has been our biggest thing, right? The linebackers essentially haven't been able to help us stop the run for years. Like, that's been one of the weakest parts of our defense. And Jerome Baker was a really solid dude, but he just wasn't it, you know? He was, he was a good blitzing linebacker, right? But other than that, he didn't really do anything special. All he had was good closeout speed. Yeah. Um. And honestly, his his tackling was a little... It was shaky at times. Shaky definitely. at times. Yeah, he would he would miss some tackles. But now we got Anthony Walker. I love what he can bring in coverage as well. But Jordan Brooks, that thumper, that guy that can <laughs> run between the, you know, the tackle, the guard, all that. Like, dude, he's gonna be able to get in there, you know, basically stop Josh Allen too. That but guy is, also the running backs, you know? You can tell by the way that guy talks, he means business. Uh, he just wants to hit you in the mouth. Mm -hmm. it, it's awesome. Well, that's that's what I love. You brought him in and Calais Campbell. Now you got J Jalen Ramsey in the back end too, right? Now these are guys that are that are nasty. Like they want to they want to smack you in the mouth. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And and yeah, I'm trying to think who else who else on the line or Offers on the that defense. Veteran presence. No, forget about veteran presence. Just like that's nasty, right? Like who would you say? Um, Those are the only three that are coming to mind right now, because you know. Javon Holland's just a nice dude. Jordan Poirier seems like a really... Actually, you know, Jordan Poirier is kind of like one of those dogs. He's a you know? hard hitter. He's a, he's a hard hitter. But I'm saying, like, guys that are, like, nasty on the field, you know? Yeah. Um, my whole point with this, though, was... Okay. You know? <laughs> more so that that we're bringing in that veter veteran leadership to these rooms where they can, like you said, quarterback that specific yeah. unit. And you got one on every single end, right? Like every on the right. So Jordan right, Poirier, yeah. Calais Campbell, they're anchoring each Jordan part Brooks of that, and Ramsey. So it's it's all stages. In my opinion, this would work out. It should start out a lot better than last season started out. Simple simple math here would just be Jalen Ramsey starting out the season healthy and ready to play for the Dolphins. Yeah, that's that's number one. But. Also bringing in Jordan Poyer and Calais Campbell to also these different these three different levels of the of the defense. Wow, huge for the Dolphins. So I'm going to say that the Dolphins should have a better defense this season. Yeah, and I think people focus too much on the numbers, right? Like mm -hmm. for what we got these guys for. So then they start thinking like, oh yeah, he's not that great. Look what he signed for. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, a guy like Anthony Walker, his talent is there yeah but he just hasn't been able to stay on the field and i know that's chris greer's mo he brings in these guys that are you know basically hurt but mm -hmm. you get them here on the cheap and if they can produce on the field that's a home run you know what i'm saying Which last season the dolphins brought in david long jr yeah who also had a very similar career to anthony walker and he was able to stay a there, guy right? with talent but just couldn't stay on the field because of injury concern, mm -hmm. injury trouble. So if we can make that work out, maybe lightning strikes twice with Anthony Walker, now you're looking at a really good, talented, talented linebacking room. Yeah, so would you say on defense right now, there's, there's a weak spot? Like, I think every single part, the defensive line, the corners, and the linebackers, the corners, and the safeties, I think everyone is good everyone's talented up and down right well i guess our our weak spot defensive tackle i would i'm actually gonna say our weak spot is actually the edge right now because yeah of jalen phillips and bradley chubb being out it would probably be one of our strengths if everybody was healthy but i i agree with you it's a weakness now but will be a strength at least by by midway through the season mm -hmm. right yeah and 
we can't say much about it right now because we are relying heavily on a couple uh you know rookies in Mo Kamara and um and Chop Robinson. Mm-hmm. But you know, like like we've said in the past, Calais Campbell can also play edge. We have Shaq Barrett. Those are the only four guys right now that we know are healthy that we're like, okay, we know they're gonna play and they're gonna be in that rotation, right? But if Jalen Phillips comes back healthy for week one, that's huge already. Bradley Chubb maybe yeah. maybe midway through the season. I mean, it, it would suck. You know, you'd want him to be out there as soon as possible, but you also don't want to rush him back. That is a strength in our defense for sure. Yeah. Once they are back and ready to go. So I get exactly what you're saying though. I, I would have to agree there. Yeah, if they if as long as Jalen Phillips is coming back at a good time. I, I hope that the coaching staff isn't rushing him. I hope he isn't rushing himself because with the guys that you brought in, in Chop Robinson, Mo Kamara, even Shaq Barrett, Calais Campbell, who can also play the edge like we've talked about. Mm-hmm. These guys hopefully could hold down the fort, be, you know, until Jalen Phillips is 110% ready. Yeah. And we're not risking any setbacks with that that issue. And Bradley Chubb, he's going to have to wait. So what would be best is if they were 110% ready, Jalen Phillips, you get him for week one. And maybe Bradley Chubb, week four. Week four, right? That'd be cool. Start the, start the, the year second, on the, the second up, quarter. Right? Yeah. That'd be great, but yeah. we'll see. I And I would, going back to what one of the first things we were talking about, I would love to see Cam Smith play to see what he could bring to the defense. But, but yeah, overall, I do think our defense is going to be better. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things for me is that I want to see that Cam Smith not a wasted second-round pick, right? Yeah. And and uh, he, he essentially was your first-round pick because he was the first pick in that draft. We, we ended up losing that first-round pick due to the Tom Brady crap. Or was that the year that we traded Bradley Chubb's first round pick? No, I think that was because the of the Tom, Tom Brady. Brady. Well, either way, we didn't have a first round pick. So he's technically our first round pick, mm-hmm. a first round talent. So you want to see him out there. You want to see him produce on this defense. So, I mean, hopefully you can get it together. Yeah. So the Dolphins have done a lot to add to this team this offseason, even with the losses in Christian Wilkins and Xavier Howard. Yeah. And there was uh, Robert Hunt, obviously, at guard, which has been huge loss that's the biggest hole that the dolphins haven't been able to fill yeah that guy was just a freak he was able to do everything right yeah he and he was and up until last season he was actually like um he he stayed healthy yeah so with that being said are there any additions that the dolphins can make before the start of the season in free agency to make this team even better um it would have to be at right guard, right? Because right. banking on Liam Eichenberg, and I've said it, like you'd like to hope that he takes another leap, but there's no evidence backing that up or that the fact that that's going to happen. I do think, uh, you know, Butch Berry has a good track record with us so far of developing guys. I mm-hmm. mean, it's only been a year, but what I've seen Austin Jackson be able to do, you know, that that climb that he made last year, we thought that we were just like saying, all right, this is a bust. He's not going to be anything. But last year, he, he proved that he's a very good um, right tackle. And he's not one of the best in the league, but he's good, at least. That's all you need from him, mm-hmm. right? And we signed him for a cheap deal on the cheap end, right? It was like $10 mil a year. Yeah. Um, so I would like to upgrade at right guard. The guy that I'm I'm hearing a lot about is is Greg Van Roten. Um. And he, he's a little bit on the older side, but he did apparently he had one of his, his best season last year with the Raiders. Okay. So, I mean, maybe if we can bring him in on a cheap deal. I just I just don't want to go into the year having Liam Eichenberg and uh, Jack Driscoll, the mm-hmm. two guys that are fighting for that right guard spot. That means you just said, screw it. It's fine. I can sleep at night with Isaiah Wynn. I love Isaiah Wynn. I think he's great. Yeah. The I, only I thing that's scaring me is the fact that he has – the injury history. He's always injured. He's. I don't think he's ever finished a, a season healthy. So that's my only concern there. Is there any guys for you, like at right guard, that you think? Well, let's start within or, you know the what we have already, right? Okay. So I I'm also looking at the position of need most desperately would be at right guard. Mm-hmm. So we have Liam Eikenberg. And then we also have uh, Jack Driscoll. Yeah. And what's interesting to me, I, to be honest, I'm not 
super well versed in what Jack Driscoll, who he is and what he can offer. But knowing that he does come from the Eagles and the Eagles having such an amazing offensive line, I'm thinking, all right, if he was just a backup on the Eagles, maybe he could be a starter for the Dolphins, you know, because to, to crack that rotation might be uh, might be more might be difficult. He did so, play a little bit last okay. year just due to injuries and all that, but it's not like he was edging anyone out on that line, you know what I'm saying? So, Hey, you know, I, w- I would like to see what he's about, and obviously that's going with a risk because it doesn't seem like the consensus is very positive about right guard right now. And if he's still competing with Liam Meikenberg, that doesn't say a lot of great things about him. Maybe Liam Meikenberg does take that next step. So... That's another thing to consider there. But my guy that I would be looking at in free agency would be Mark Lewinsky. I know he was released by the New York Giants last year. Mm -hmm. And he he had a pretty good season. I think he was rated their top guard or their top offensive lineman uh, for last year. Uh So that's a guy that I would try to bring in to compete for that right guard spot, compete with Driscoll and compete with Eichenberg, see what he has to offer and maybe round out this this offensive line, which is our, it's our weakest group by far. Yeah, I I would love that pickup as well. Um, Jack Driscoll, I think all he's bringing is depth at the position. Okay. If if you go into the season with him as your right guard, man, unless he like really performs well and they're like, wow, we really believe in this kid. He looks fantastic on the line. It would it would definitely be a. I guess it will be a failed job by the front office, you know, addressing that position of need. And I have said, I think that that maybe they they don't value that position as much as us fans do. You know, but maybe this whole deal with Liam Eikenberg, it might be best to just not start him because he's a guy that's played all over the line, correct? Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So since he's played everywhere, maybe this is a guy that you just hold back and let someone else start in his place because... Offensive lines just tend to do this. Someone on the line is going to get hurt. It just kind of happens. Just have him fresh. Yeah, like have ready him to go. fresh, ready to go in whatever position he needs to step up in. He's not going to be as good or as serviceable as any guy that we have starting out well, there. That's, but that's hindering his development, though. Like, okay. like let's, let's, pick, let's pick a spot on the line and be like, yo, you're a right guard or you're a left guard or you're a center. We know he's not going to play tackle, right? No. Which he was a left tackle coming into the league, but... You're you're also not giving him an opportunity to be like, all right, I'm gonna be one of the better centers in the league ever because you, you're you're constantly moving me on the line. And he has addressed that. He has said, I mean, if I can't stick to a spot, how am I gonna improve? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which I understand, but I think if you're finally gonna try him out at right guard, keep him there at right guard. And I think he did play his best at right guard, but obviously you couldn't play because of Robert Hunt. You you're not gonna bench him for him. Or okay, that's him, fair. So, so maybe. Maybe this is the season. Maybe this is the Liam Meikenberg season. Maybe. Look, I'm not banking on him being anything great, but the Dolphins definitely see something in him. Or it's just the fact that we invested such a high pick in him that, you know, we need to make this work, you know? So, yeah. Which, if that's what they're doing, I mean, they're, they're failing the fans because that's it's not right. Well, but. if we look at other positions, not necessarily of need, but just – you know, doing your due diligence around the free agency market. You got some quarterbacks out there. Maybe you get rid of Mike White and Skylar Thompson all together and bring in a guy like reunite the Dolphins with Ryan Tannehill to back up to Otungo Vailoa. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, then you also have the running backs who the one that sticks out there to me is Dalvin Cook. And to be completely honest, I'm over that completely. But uh, it's not needed, obviously. It's right? not needed. And for a time last season, that was the hottest topic in the NFL. So, yeah. The Dolphins were going crazy for Dalvin Cook. It looked like Dalvin Cook was flirting so much with Miami. Uh, he was desperate to come here. He bro. was. It, at least it seemed like it. And yeah. we even made like that funny Wolverine um, frame deal with uh, with yeah, Dalvin can Cook. Can you put it here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, that that was awesome. But I'm I'm over it and I don't really care to go after another running back. Then we have the tight end room, uh, the tight end of av- tight ends available. You got the one that sticks out to he- me here would be Jimmy Graham. That'd be cool. It would be cool, but well, that's it. Just cool, um, right? I'm I'm good on that. And now let's go on to the wide receivers that are available right now. 
some pretty interesting names actually still left in free agency. Oh, Hunter Renfro is still available and Michael yeah. Thomas. Yeah, so wow. we obviously know what Robbie Chosen or mm -hmm. Chosen Robbie or whatever he wants to call himself now um, brings. Probably not a guy that'll come back to the team. Julio nah, we, Jones. We, we, we wouldn't want him back. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't want him Then back. you got Julio Jones. Love Julio Jones, but um, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Hunter Renfro would be really cool, mm -hmm. but I think we, we have a few Hunter Renfros, if I'm being completely honest, on this team. So um, I'm okay with that. Would Michael, you say Malik Washington? Yeah, Malik Washington, Taj Washington. Taj Washington, um, uh, Braxton Berrios. Braxton Berrios. But like, I mean, Hunter, Hunter Renfro is a different level, right? Because he actually produced Because he's on the proven field. it. Yeah. He's proven it. But I, another small receiver. We don't need it. We, we really don't need it, yeah. obviously. The one, the one out of this entire list that I'm like, all right, I'm interested to see what that looks like would be Michael Thomas because he's that big dude. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're locked in and loaded on receiver. And I really want Connor Williams back. I know, I know we touched on that yesterday, bro, but, like, man, he was just so special when he was playing. The only issue that we did talk about was the snaps. I know a lot of people were blaming that on Tua as well, but that doesn't make any sense, man. Like, just get him the ball exactly where it needs to be, you know what I'm saying? But if we can manage to bring him back, man, cause, and, and I don't want to say it's not going to happen. I think it's possible. So if we can do well, that, I would possible, love that. I would love that. Anything's possible. Because, I mean, bro, sure. what, if, what if he goes another, dude, it's right before the season. He still hasn't signed, and he's like, I already know the Dolphins' offense. I already know everything going on there. Screw it. I'll be a depth piece. If I get to play, awesome. If not, I'm sitting on the bench for the whole year. I get to continue to heal. And then by, by this time next year, I get to sign with someone and say, hey, look, I'm completely healthy. Come look at my knee. Look at all this. Like, Honestly, he would be amazing as a depth piece. Healthy. healthy. Maybe even a, uh, your starting left guard. I do love Isaiah Wynn, but he played left guard, and he was pretty damn good. The only thing that he had to clean up was his penalties. Yeah, the penalties. And were he kind of did it with the at center. I know it's a different position entirely, yeah. but you know, I would, I would, I don't, I don't have an issue with that. I don't have an issue with Connor Williams coming back. I think that'd be amazing for oh, imagine for everyone involved. But it's, but I don't think that's the Dolphins doing. I think he, of course. Connor Williams. I know, just talking about in a perfect world, right? But yeah. imagine him with next to Teron Armstead. So Teron, Connor. And then Aaron Brewer, all there on that left side, right? Mm -hmm. And then the right side, whatever. I I like Austin Jackson, what he brings, but until we figure out that right guard position, yeah, I don't know. And then even at even backing them up, we got Patrick Paul at left tackle, who that is actually something. Well, we that, have Lamb coming back as well. Well, we also have Lamb too, yeah. and Lamb I think can play some left guard too, right? Yeah, I just don't know if he wants to. Okay. I mean, even then, this is his last year. Maybe he's like, screw it, I'll do whatever you guys want. But uh, oh yeah, he's retiring. Huh? Yeah, he's retiring. That's cool. Um, well, yeah, I'm super excited for Patrick Paul because that guy is an absolute unit, six foot yeah. seven beast, like, and he has the helmet and everything. So hopefully Teron Armstead really takes him under his wing and says, buddy boy, this is how we do it. Let's yeah. get into it. Let me show you whatever it is he does. Well, that now that you said Teron Armstead, do you think this is his last year? Because he did make some comments saying, I'm not going to commit to this being my last year, but like, let's see. I think Teron wants to go out with a bang. Yeah. So if we win it, he's he's retiring. Yeah. That that's how I yeah. feel. That's how I feel. Yeah. I and I, I think it could go two ways. If Teron, if the the Dolphins absolutely just fumble a bag here and just don't do anything with this season, he'll probably say, "All right, yeah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. I'm done with the NFL." If the Dolphins, yeah, it's kind of hard to be motivated after that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If the Dolphins get really, really close, then he'll probably say, all right, let's give it one more shot. We were right there. We were knocking on the door. But yeah, like let's that's, say that's we go I to the ASC it. championship and we lose it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that would be heartbreaking, obviously. Yeah, but you know what? It's a step but, up. But it is. And he's probably like, damn, easy. we are right there. Yeah. And I feel like you get a lot of players back just off of that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that that actually also, I mean, it's it's a quick thing. I know we touched on it before, but if that were to happen as well, you'd like to think that the Dolphins, even if they don't get a deal done right now with Tyreek, they're gonna figure something out to to make sure he stays here for the next few years, you know? Yeah. So it's important, man. Winning is super important. I think that's what uh helps you, you know, keep your core. You get me? Cause then 
or also sometimes it's your demise for other players that kind of come up right and they're like shit i'm gonna go to this other team and, and get my bag you know so it seems like a lot of dolphins players are and i know i know this is a thing that a lot of players around the nfl say uh, and this is across all sports actually you know they get to a team they're like i want to retire with this team yeah. i forgot what quarter oh i think it's um it's, kirk cousins it's kirk cousins yeah. kirk cousins who's every time he lands on a new team he's like i want to retire a viking i want to retire a falcon like that's the idea but everyone i mean he's constantly being disrespected i feel bad for the guy man yeah. like he's he's actually been consistently almost a top 10 quarterback for all these years, right? Yeah, and he's not viewed at it as it, which no, is pretty crazy. But his numbers are always there. Yeah, like they are. I mean, I, I'm not saying numbers are are everything, but it, it is it is a baseline for you know knowing what type of quarterback is out there, right? Yeah, I remember when RG three who put on that that yeah. crazy performance. Well, it was rookie year, mm -hmm. man. And then this kid. I don't know if it was year two of RG3. He stepped in, and I was like, wow. I think it's when RG3 had the the injury, the knee injury, mm -hmm. right? He stepped in, and he did a really good job. I was like, this is pretty cool. He took his job. Yeah. Yeah. So he's always he's been a, a pretty good player throughout his career. But, but yeah, going back to it, like, I, I do notice that a lot of Dolphins players at least say, I want to retire a Miami Dolphin. And... I actually get the sense that Tyreek Hill means that when mm -hmm. he says that he wants to, that the most important thing to him is being a Miami Dolphin. Yeah, because we said it. He's He built this culture. He yeah. did with Mike McDaniel, with Tua. Um, he is the model Miami Dolphin right now. Forget yeah. about the off-field stuff, but it's behind his work ethic, the type of player he is. I think, uh, I think the Dolphins try to find a way to make that happen, though. There's no way, like, because that's... Aside from Tua, that is the most important contract to figure out. Yeah. And a lot of people might say, like, oh, we don't really need to spend all that money on the receivers. But, man, that's – I think we have another thing coming to us if we think that we can be the same exact team without Tyreek Hill. You yeah. Know? And it's pretty cool. He's raising a bunch of Tyreek Hills in Miami. So Yeah. Well, maybe same. we'll have a, a future Tyreek Hill <laughs> yeah. on the Dolphins, too. He's uh, definitely spreading the love down here in Miami. He's spreading that seed. <laughs> Yo, yeah. but, <laughs> I mean, dude, he's got some pretty good odds of having an NFL player, right? He does, yeah. He's got a he's, bunch of kids He's increasing it every year, it yeah. seems. Yeah. <laughs> good for you, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, well, yeah, if the Dolphins don't improve the roster, though, um, what do you think is the floor for this team as it stands? If we don't improve if we do, right like if we go into we If just, we go into the season with what we have right now, what do you think the floor is for this team? Well, surprisingly, even if we just – which is it's not easy to say, but if we just stayed where we're at right now with all the players that we have, I think it's enough. You know, maybe in the middle of the season, if if someone gets hurt, you have to sign a guy off the street. That might happen. Um, but the floor, the floor, yeah, the floor. So like absolute worst that I think, yeah, we would be. Yeah, I, I think the floor is a ten win team. Okay. I think so. I mean, that's which is really good, right? Yeah, if I was going to make our floor about nine wins, but I don't is, see us winning only nine, though. And I don't like, see that either. I don't. I'm saying this is like no. I'm, things just didn't pan out for this team. No, I know, but I, I I really believe that we are a lot better than last year. We improved in every single aspect, except for right guard. Except for right guard, yeah, and maybe except for um, defensive tackle. But I think we have got a guy that's really. It's, it at least stops the bleeding, right? Yeah, in a good, that's for and, sure. And it's not just saying bare minimum. I think we got a hell of a player in Calais Campbell, even though he's he's that old. But And, you know, there's some give and take with Calais Campbell, too, being signed because maybe he's not the defensive tackle that Christian Wilkins is at the moment, but he's also going to be able to teach the defensive tackles that we have, be able to teach a little bit of that edge, give some mm -hmm. of his experience the edge, too, and just all across the line, just – being able to share his experience and his knowledge of the game, I think is going to make other players around him better. Yeah. So maybe that's a factor that hasn't been taken into account too much, but having him there, even though he's not the player that Christian Wilkins is, he is more of a leader, more of a teacher. So maybe there's something else that, that's not being taken into account there. Yeah, and I think uh, the best move was not re-signing Christian Wilkins. Obviously. He wasn't a spring chicken, bro. Mm -hmm. And we were... 
In fact, we are a better team because we did not re-sign Christian Wilkins. Well, yeah. That's, just, that was, we were able to actually build this team, provide it with depth, improve in a bunch of positions, Let's linebacker, safety. So these are all the players that we can fit in one year into Christian Wilkins' contract. Look at that list. That is insane. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And this is a guy, like I said, he's not a spring chicken, right? Mm -hmm. Did I say that? Yeah, you said that. Uh, but he's 28 years old. I yeah. mean, it's not like you don't you don't want to. And look, Christian Wilkins wasn't consistent. Mm -hmm. Like he just did, had this badass season, right? The year before that, he did have a good season. And you you saw that he's capable of being a, a disruptor and a badass, you know, defensive lineman. But for a guy to do it on his, basically his, his, um, Shit, what's it what's it called? Do it what in his prime? Oh man. Contract year. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. And to do that in your contract year, yes, you're motivated, but like now you got the bag. Can you become a um, fat cat? A fat cat. Right? Like we saw it with Jason syndrome. Sanders, right? Yeah. <laughs> he got his money and he instantly sucked. I mean, if Christian Wilkins right off the bat, maybe he had a whatever rookie season, but from his second year on, he's just like this badass player that you're like, okay, yeah, you gotta pay this kid. I would have I would have been able to like stomach that contract, right? But even then, if we would have signed him, I know there's a million Dolphins fans out there that, including myself, that would have been like, "Damn, bro, he's not worth all that money." Yeah, and can you imagine not having the rest of these players that no, we picked man. up no. within that con like that's yeah. that would that would be terrible for us. Yeah, just on defense, what we were able to to bring in mm -hmm. by letting him go, I, I think it was fantastic, and even on offense. So mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, okay, so now that we have the floor, you're saying 10 wins, I'm saying 9 wins. What do you think is the ceiling for the Miami Dolphins? A 14-win team. That's the ceiling? Well, ceiling to me is, uh, I mean, shit, I think we we can compete against anyone out there, right, the mm -hmm. whole year. I just want to be a little realistic with, you know, providing a an estimate on what type of wins we would get, right? Okay, I'm also going to say... 13, 14 wins mm -hmm. for this team. Ceiling. Absolutely. Yeah. Ceiling. That, that means that the Dolphins are having the best of luck. Yeah, Everything they're hitting is firing on all, on cylinders. all cylinders. Yeah. Also, ceiling would be, because I do think that this is a championship caliber team when you consider everything, it, especially if we can figure out that right guard spot. I think that's like the last <laughs> piece the Dolphins are missing right now. Mm -hmm. Assuming everyone stays healthy, people come back from injury okay, and we get that right guard, I do think this is a championship caliber, caliber team. But what do you think the rankings could be as far as the ceiling goes for offense and then ranking as as far as the ceiling goes for defense? Okay, so, like, if if we'll be, like, the number one offense. Right, or, right. Okay. Ceiling? Why is he Ceiling, saying? yeah. Well, number one offense for sure. I mean, we already did that last year, right? So we, we only got better on offense, in my opinion. And then for defense... Top eight, maybe. Top eight? I think we were top top ten last year. Um, so I would say top eight. I, I think I think Anthony Weaver is, you know, obviously he didn't have much success as the Houston Texans uh defensive coordinator. That was also his first year doing that. But he has shown as a coach, he gets the most out of his players on as a defensive line coach. And I think if there's someone to bring in as a defensive coordinator, the best person would have been him because we need to ask for a lot from these defensive tackles, right, with the loss of Christian Wilkins. I think he's going to put people in the right position. I think, uh, you know, the fact that he's he's more so a player's coach mm -hmm. and he's he seems like he would listen to Mike McDaniel and maybe anyone else that's willing to provide, I guess, uh, you know, provide him with some some help, in any way, like, hey, look, I saw this, man. I think you should do this instead. He, he looks like the type of person like a, uh, that would be willing to hear that, right? Yeah. And obviously, Vic Fangio will just set on his ways. He's like, dude, you're not going to tell me how to run a defense. Everyone runs this defense that I run because I created it, blah, blah, blah. So. Yeah, he just didn't want to be here either. He nah, screw him, bro. Honestly, yeah. I didn't like him. And yeah. and it's funny. You see his, his press conferences here compared to when he went to the Eagles. He's yeah. all smiles in the it's Eagles. It's so weird. Like, yeah, he's a weirdo. What is that? Why well, even come here in the first place? I, think I don't get it. I think he's from Philly or he has family in Philly, so uh -huh. he's kind of like home now. So I, that's probably what it is. 
I mean, they are a hell of a team too. But, but then, but then, why even come over here? Like in the first for the place? money. Like, it was for the money. We offered why? him a shit ton of money. He's like, screw it for Miami and that. Yeah, I'll do it. I mean, he didn't really have another option. It's not like the Eagles were hiring him. So now they did. Yeah. Which, in my opinion, hell of a tank. Like they they were tampering for sure. So I don't know how the hell that happened. I don't know why they were able to do that because. It seemed like he was still our defensive coordinator, and there was still reports coming out that he's gonna go, you know, be there the defensive coordinator for the Eagles. So like, yeah, that was just overall a weird situation with Vic Fangio. But I'm happy he's gone. Yeah, me too. Screw it. Yeah. And I, I'm and the the players are happy too. So that's the best part. Well, I'm gonna say yeah. Obviously, the Dolphins could be ranked the number one offense in the league. That's not really a stretch. No, it's based not. off of what we saw last season. I think it's just as long as they can stay healthy. I think actually. Tua spreads the ball around, gives everybody some some love on that offense, mm -hmm. uses the tight end room, uses that third option at receiver. I think that the the offense has no issue being a number one offense. On defense... Really fast, gonna, before you go into defense, and I, I want to ask you another question then. Do you think we could be the number one passing offense and number one running offense? I think it could happen, it's, which is pretty crazy, but I, yeah. I think it could happen. I mean, weren't we close we were, to that we last were, year? We at, at one point, I think we were. Yeah, I think after that, after that Broncos game, we probably were. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was early in the and, season, and, right? Yeah, it was early in the season, but yeah, I think it. I think it's entirely possible because all it takes is like this team is full of home run hitters when it comes to passing the ball and running the ball. Like you, easily, you get it to to OBJ, he'll be able to make a play. You get it to Jonu Smith at tight end. He's going to be able to make a play, maybe take it to the house. We obviously know what Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle can do. And then when you run the ball, you got Raheem Mostert, who's one of the faster guys in the NFL. Devon A. Chain, A. Chan might be the fastest guy in the NFL, mm -hmm. along with Tyreek Hill. And then we just pick up this kid, Jalen Wright, from the draft. He also looks like another home run hitter. So why, like, all you got to do is break a few a game. Yeah. You know, and it could be any of these guys. Yeah. You don't know where it's coming. Last season, it was Tyree Kill and Jay Waddle. Mm -hmm. Well, also Devon A. Chan. We, we saw what we, he brought finally. Yeah. But this year is a little bit different. Hopefully, Tool recognizes that. Hopefully, Mike McDaniel recognizes that. And they're not looking at it saying, man, we can break all these records. Let's get Tyree Kill at 2K. Yeah. Like, I don't, if I we think start the season out like that, that's going to be problematic for the Dolphins offense. But if they recognize it, there's talent everywhere. Let's spread the ball around. Let's keep the defense guessing. They're going to break other kinds of records. Yeah. It's just going to happen, but it's or also going to there it's going to come along with winning, you yeah. know? And that's that's what's important here. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the defense goes, I think the defense can be like you said, a top 8, top 8. I can see that happening. And I think they could crack top 5 once everyone's healthy. Yeah. So, if everyone's healthy and you know they come back to to form. Top five shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, and that's not that's not us being overly optimistic. I think that's actually just based off of uh, uh, the talent that we have in the room, and I, I also the coach. I, I love Anthony Weaver. I think he's going to be great. I don't know why. I just have a really good feeling. And this is just you know basically optimism. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely I definitely think that's that's a uh, something that can be achieved. Top yeah. eight. Well, anyway, guys, that's going to end today's show. We hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and leave some comments down below. Also, guys, remember to tweet with hashtag FinHub with any questions or comments or ideas on the show. And you could be featured in next week's episode or next episode. Actually, it could be tomorrow's episode. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to do it for today. We hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thumbs up. Peace.